Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss a very important topic which is also a very common pediatric emergency. So let's read the question. A four-year-old girl is brought to emergency department after she had a choking episode three hours ago while playing with her father's wallet. She is pointing towards her neck and struggling to drink. What is the most appropriate management of this patient? A. Discharge with advice that object will likely pass spontaneously. B. Admit for observation for 24 to 48 hours. C. Refer for endoscopic removal of object. D. Give a stat dose of hyoscine. And E. Trial of fizzy drink to see if object will pass. So the first most important thing is to determine where exactly is this object and what is this object. So you are going to take the history from the patient and most likely uh, the history is going to tell you what the object is. So it is going to make it easier for you to decide what you need to do. But most of the time this kind of incident happens when children are left unattended. So the parent might not be able to tell you what exactly happened and the child might also not be able to speak. So what are you going to do in this case? The first most important investigation that you need to order immediately is a chest x-ray and you have to order it in AP and lateral both views. It is very important to see the size and configuration. If you only see the AP or PA view of chest x-ray, you are not going to know exactly what the 3D dimensions are. Only on the lateral view will you be able to make a definitive diagnosis after comparing both of the films that this is a coin. When you order a chest x-ray in both of these views, this is what it is going to look like. You can see that in the AP view, you see a circular object which is stuck somewhere in the trachea or the esophagus and on the lateral view you see a slit like appearance which means the coin or that rounded object is lying in such a way that it is stuck and it is facing towards the front so it is most likely a coin you can determine the size the configuration by looking at these two films now the next important thing to determine is where exactly is this coin lying if it's esophagus or trachea the first important thing is if the coin was lying in the trachea of the patient the patient would be coming to you either gasping or in a collapsed state because if it was stuck in the trachea it would not allow the child to play or continue her daily activities for since the last three hours so this is something that you are going to see on your examination or you are going to observe on the presentation of the patient. The second thing is uh, once you start looking at different types of x-rays you are going to know where exactly a um, foreign body might lodge inside the trachea. For example here we have another x-ray. Uh, let me just okay so here we have another x-ray and you can see that the foreign body is lodged somewhere over here so whenever a foreign body is in the trachea there is a chance that it is going to travel down the trachea and lodge somewhere between the uh, right or the left bronchi or within the right bronchi or the left bronchi but when a foreign body is in the esophagus like in the case that we are actually looking at right now esophagus has different constrictions and these are those narrow points where the foreign body can lodge so if you see something over here you have to keep in mind that it might be somewhere in the esophagus coming back to the question it cannot be option a because if the coin was small enough it would have easily passed by now the fact that it is still stuck over there after three hours means that there is not going to be any benefit if we discharge the patient and ask them to wait so a is incorrect then b we can admit the patient for observation for 24 to 48 hours 
Now looking back at the scenario, it says that the patient is pointing towards the neck and she's struggling to drink. Do you think we can keep a patient NPO that is nil per oral for 24 to 48 hours, which is between one to two days, which means that she will not be able to drink or eat anything. This does not seem like any logical option. So this is also incorrect. The third one is refer for endoscopic removal of object. This actually makes sense because the object is stuck in the throat. It's not going there by itself. It is not in a place which can be approached and removed by any instrument. So yeah, this makes some kind of sense. So this is a possible answer. Coming to D, give a stat dose of hyoscine. Hyoscine is an antispasmodic, which means it relieves spasm. So relieving the spasm in the esophagus is not very logical because it can not dislodge a large coin and move it along the esophagus. This is not a very good option. In fact, this can cause further obstruction into a position which will be more difficult than to remove. So this is also an incorrect answer. Coming to E, trial of fizzy drink to see if object will pass. Again, the object is obstructed because of its large size and because of the narrowing of the esophagus. When you give a fizzy drink, there are two hazards. The first one is that you are not really sure what the object is. You can claim that it is a coin based on your chest x-ray findings and your experience in the emergency department of how the patient presents and what are the findings that you see on the chest x-ray. But you cannot give a fizzy drink and then rely on it because it might react with the foreign body which is present in the esophagus. So it is not a very good option. It may further cause bubbles and give a choking sensation which will be much more distressful for the child and can lead to an actual emergency. So E is also incorrect. The correct answer then is C, refer to endoscopic removal of the object. I have created a slideshow separately which enlists all the reason why and when you should think about emergency endoscopic removal of an object. So the first one is, let's see, signs of airway compromise, then evidence of near complete esophageal obstruction, that is the patient is not swallowing secretions and in our case the patient was unable to drink, so it is the same as that. Ingested object is sharp, long, more than 5 cm or a super absorbent polymer and is in the esophagus or stomach. Next, object is a high powered magnet or magnets when a disc battery is in the esophagus and in some cases in the stomach. So these are the two things that you're going to get on the history. Next, signs or symptoms usually suggesting impending or complete esophageal perforation severe neck or chest pain or dinophagia which is difficulty and pain in swallowing aphagia drooling tachycardia tachypnea pyrexia surgical emphysema which is neck swelling or crepitus and pneumomediastinum moving forward if you have sinus symptoms suggesting inflammation or intestinal perforation or obstruction so two things perforation and obstruction. They are very, very important and need to be seen. This means that the foreign object was small and now it has moved downward. And in the case of perforation, you are going to do a laparotomy. In the case of obstruction, you are going to try to attempt removal by an endoscope first. And if it does not work, then you have to think of other ways. The last point says where objects are lodged in the esophagus for more than 24 hours or for an unknown duration because it makes sense that if the object was lodged somewhere it would have gone down by that time so it is not possible to take an instrument by hand and remove it so you have to do endoscopy you have to look through the camera to find the object and then remove it this was all about the topic that is foreign body esophagus I hope you liked it and I hope you understood why the option C was the correct answer 
and how you are going to approach a patient that comes into the emergency department with a history of foreign bodies. Thank you.